The nature of this flower is to bloom rebellious, living against the elemental crush, a song of color blooming for deserving eyes, blooming gloriously for itself. Alice Walker, dedicated to the girls. She don't succeed Dust yourself off and try again You can dust it off and try again Try again Cause if at first you don't succeed You can lift it up and try again Lift yourself up and try again Hello! I'm gonna take these off Although should I keep them on? <laughs> these, these are not Okay, I have another pair that I think are cuter Yes! I'm on my my early 2000s vibe. These are two different shirts that I just like put one over top of the other. This is cute, this is cute. Hello and welcome slash welcome back to my channel. My name is Khadija, your favorite internet play auntie. Hello to all my returning nieces, nephews, and nibblings, and my fellow aunties, uncles, and piblings. If you're new, feel free to take a look around, suss out the vibe. I just sit on my floor, talk about whatever I want, and that is it. I'm gonna take these off because this is not, it's rude to wear sunglasses indoors. This video is brought to you by Surfshark VPN. Surfshark came through again for your girl. Yes, 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 yes. So for those of you that weren't paying attention last time Surfshark is a VPN it's an extension that you can put on your browser Chrome if you got it whatever you're working with you can pop it on in there and it allows you to change your location and view things from any part of the world I'm sorry hi yes I've been using it a lot to try to get on my American Netflix game because last time I was watching Pose catching up before season 3 started but now I've kind of been watching the originals again. Oh, I know, I was, uh, I love the Vampire Diaries and the originals. And they have legacies on there, so I'm gonna start watching it, ah! Surfshark has over 3,200 servers in 65 countries, so it's a pretty long list of places to choose from if you're trying to catch up on different shows from around the world. So click the link in my description and enter promo code MBO to get 83% off and three months free 99. All right, let's get back to the video. So today I want to talk to y'all or do a continuation of my video from last week. If you didn't see that one, go check it out. I'll link it above about video vixens. And I know last week I had said, well, let's just roll the clip. So I have only scratched the surface when it comes to this video vixen thing. As I said, next week we're gonna dive into it. We're gonna use critical theory and just talk about the impact of the video vixen. Hmm. Yeah, we're not doing that today. Um, listen, I it's been a really busy month for me. Um, some of y'all know I do other stuff outside of this and like it's just it's just been a very busy month so so after finishing last week's video I realized that I didn't have the space and time to talk and dive into those things as much but we're still gonna have some conversations because I did analyze a lot of the videos that I put in that video so we're going to talk about some themes that I noticed while examining those videos. We're gonna talk about the male gaze, specifically in hip hop, male G-A-Z-E. We're gonna talk about the distinction between sexual desire and sexual access, a bit about agency, and then of course I'm gonna give my final thoughts. So let's just get right into it. I don't expect we'll be here too long. So I watched about 25 videos for this vid and it was, interesting a lot of the same shots ideas and themes just kept coming up so let me list a few dozen slow motion shot of a femme walking around with her legs out and some oil on them rapper surrounded by women rappers entourage surrounded by women rapper dancing with a different woman every chance he gets the female to male ratio being heavily skewed in one direction woman in bathing suits or lingerie women with mostly straight or wavy hair 
mostly light-skinned women. Woman looking mostly disinterested but very hot standing next to rapper. Woman coming out of a pool. Woman going into a pool. Man rapping about being a pimp. Man rapping about how a woman should leave her man. Man rapping about not wanting an easy girl. Man rapping about not wanting a girl who doesn't put out in the very same song. Women in bathing suits playing steel drums. Woman eating a sexually suggestive food item. Sexually suggestive shots of women implying bisexuality. Upward shots of a woman's body. Downward shots of a woman's body. Woman's stomach. Woman's lips. Yachts. Mansions. Fancy cars. Alcohol. Jewelry. Woman giving a come hither stare to the camera. Woman being walked on leashes. 50 cent, excuse me? I thought I knew what the male gaze was, but after seeing all of these videos, I, I found out what the male gaze was, at least in hip hop. So for those of you that don't know, let's define male G-A-Z-E. In feminist theory, the male gaze is the act of depicting women and the world in the visual arts and in literature from a masculine heterosexual perspective that presents and represents women as sexual objects for the pleasure of the heterosexual male viewer. Now I'm sure that seems kind of obvious because it's like, duh, if you're a straight masculine dude and you're making a music video, of course it's going to be from the male gaze. That's the only perspective you have. The observation that I have about the male gaze though is more so about the world that we live in that creates less than favorable outcomes for these objects of desire. What I mean by that is that we're all going to present things from the perspective we know, our own, but what happens if our perspective is harmful to others? What if our perspective perpetuates the idea that black and Latino women are meant to only be appreciated for their bodies? What if our perspective is that these women are and should always be sexually available? What if our perspective is that these kinds of women are subservient decorations, perfect for a good time, but not a long time? I'm not trying to say that any of the women acting in these videos are any of these things, what I'm saying is when I'm analyzing a creation, my first question is typically what is the story that's being told or sold here? What are you trying to say? And in the era of 2000s hip hop, the story that seemed to be told or sold was that if you bought this CD, listened to this music and watch these videos, you too could be like Jay-Z, surrounded by beautiful women, partying it up with your friends on a $10 million yacht, without a care in the world. You too could live the fantasy, at least for five minutes and seven seconds. So once I think I've observed what story is being told, I like to examine how the story is being told slash sold. What are they saying in these lyrics? Why is it being shot this way? Why is it being edited this way, et cetera. I know that's not how you say et cetera, I know. So my observations about how these rappers sell you this fantasy is first through this mental masturbation, ego stroking, all of this sort of stuff that they employ in their lyrics. And this is something that Mako Fitz talks about in her paper, Drop It Like It's Hot. Of course, I will link my work cited. Uh, I would definitely recommend y'all read that paper. She actually had interviewed a lot of people that worked in this industry. So there's a lot of really interesting behind the scenes information that's that's being recounted in that. But with this mental masturbation, this ego stroking, it's, it's kind of like a dick measuring contest between these guys through their lyrics, which has always been central in hip hop. And it's not just about how wealthy or tough or famous the rapper is. When you're looking at these 2000s videos, you see how it's also about how the rapper measures up sexually. A lot of different lyrics talking about or insinuating that the object of their desire, the video vixen in the video should leave her man to be with this guy or like your man doesn't hit it like I do or he can't possibly, all this kind of stuff. The next way they sell you this fantasy is through the excess of it all. Opulence is all throughout these videos in the type of alcohol that they're consuming, the jewelry that they're showing off, the mansions, the videos are located at, the cars, the yachts, all of it. And then of course, we get to the final piece of the fantasy, which is the vixen, the object of desire. Her body's the original slim thick ratio. She doesn't always, but typically has caramel skin, long hair, full lips, full hips, and a big old booty. Now, as a big fan of the female form, this fantasy wouldn't seem so bad to me if it was just about admiring the beauty of different types of women's bodies, like cool, okay, or specifically, I guess in these videos, these types of women's bodies. But again, we have to think about what's being implied by depicting these women in this way. And when we consider that, we have to consider the difference between sexual desire and sexual access. 
So in Fitz's paper, she brings up this distinction, which I had never even considered before, but y'all, when I read this, I was gagged. The intersection of desire and access is the problematic of the booty video. And when women attempt to speak out on how these lines are blurred, they are kicked to the curb. When you're selling the fantasy of something, it's all well and good. You might not mean any harm. It seems like a lot of these rappers actually viewed the way they were showing these women as them kind of paying an homage to black women, Latina women with this type of body, you know, a love letter, if you will. Girls, 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 but these depictions of these women proliferated throughout media on a regular basis, particularly black and Latina women, it fools some people into thinking that they're given access to these women's body. And this is something that Fitz talks about in the paper behind the scenes, is that a lot of these video models, especially if they were extras, you know, you're on set for long hours, it's long days, and people are buying alcohol, and it's basically partying for hours and hours all day, wearing bathing suits, scantily clad, whatever, and it's just not always the best combination. And so, if a vixen or any of the extras or anything are in this video and they're selling this fantasy, this desire, it's like, okay, cute. But then they turn off the cameras and you have some rappers or directors or members of the rapper's entourage trying to come at these girls, trying to get sexual favors from them and all of this stuff, or thinking that they have access to these women's bodies just because they were showing their bodies in a music video. Do you know what I mean? Like it just becomes even more dangerous when these men try and reenact these fantasies or impose their own fantasy based off of the image that they see of these women in these videos, thinking that just because they were sexually desirable, that meant that they're allowed to have access to their bodies. And that's honestly something I've been grappling with when it comes to sexual expression and liberation living in a black woman's body. You know, a few years ago, I posted a picture of myself in a bathing suit on Instagram. I'll show you here. And I was like, thinking it was cute, you know, whatever. And I don't typically post photos of myself in bathing suits on Instagram or like, especially at that time, I didn't really because I just was very self-conscious about showing too much of my body on the internet because I always believe that once you put something on the internet, it doesn't belong to you anymore, even if it, it just doesn't, unfortunately, in the world that we live in. So I've always been kind of mindful of that, but I posted this photo, a lot of people were commenting on it and I was like, oh, okay, cute, you know, I was like a little uncomfortable. I was like, it's fine, it's whatever. And then my mom commented and sent me a message just trying to tell me to take it down because she was like, it's a bit much. Mm. And I just felt so annoyed by that because like, if I'm just like sitting down poolside wanting to take a photo in a bathing suit, if I was, 20 pounds, 30, 40 pounds skinnier, or uh, didn't have the hips that I have, or the booty or the boobs that I have, it wouldn't be as big of an issue. But because I have this type of body, this, this, these type of proportions, I'm immediately, even if I'm not trying to be a sexual being, if I'm just thinking, I look cute, yes, I love this, I'm immediately sexualized. Do you know what I mean? And people can have the fantasy if they want in their minds, if they see a photo of me or they see my body and they're like, ooh, yeah, like I can't control what happens in people's minds, but it's the sexual access thing that it always comes back to of just because I am enjoying living in my body, I'm wearing something that I think is cute and, and posting a photo or a video or whatever, singing about my, you know, what's being out, you know, I'm wearing something other than black with it out and having fun existing in this body is not me inviting somebody. Do you know what I mean? That's just not like one plus one does not equal seven. And I think that was something that I had never even considered. I think it was always in the back of my mind as to why I always felt a little bit weird about showing more of my body on the internet because I just was like, people are just gonna make a big deal about it for no reason and I don't know, blah, blah. But after learning about, or even just hearing those two terms, I've understood why, okay, like people can have a fantasy about you. You, again, can't control what goes on in someone's mind about you, but like that's where the problem lies is that people blur that line and think that because you put something, a photo of yourself on the internet looking cute or sexy or showing your body, and especially if you have the kind of body where you have bigger hips, you have a bigger butt, you have a bigger boobs, or you have a smaller waist, all of a sudden, they think that they are allowed to have access to your body because that's what they have been told through media and, and all of these different depictions about what 
women with that kind of body are like. Do you know what I mean? Like even think about Jessica Rabbit, like she was a sex kitten, whatever, and that's because she had these curves. And she's a cartoon character. The way the media will depict bodies like that, it's not just what's being shown on the outside of, oh, it's a sexy body, this is a sexy whatever. It's what's being implied when you put that body at the focus and what you do to that body, how these rappers interact with that body. That's what we have to think about. What are they trying to imply? Women with this type of body, with this maybe type of skin tone, with this type of hair, with these type of lips, they are sexy, they're beautiful. Yes, we love to see it, sure, but they are also ours. We, we're also allowed to consume them, not just visually, but in other ways. And as trigger warning, sexual assault, five, four, three, two, one. As someone who is a survivor of sexual assault and abuse on more than one occasion, I always felt this shame about myself because I thought, oh, it's something I did. It's my fault, it's why, like, and and to be honest, especially with dealing with that stuff when I was younger, there's nothing about me being a younger, especially being a child or a teenager, that is that was ever sexually inviting a grown man. Do you know what I mean? Like there was nothing about that. And even as I got older and, and maybe started to care more about how I looked and looked quote unquote glowed up or whatever, that still wasn't inviting anyone to my body. But people see the body shape, see my complexion, see this and think that they have permission to because the women with this type of body, that's how they are. They're the Instagram model type. They're the immediately sexy, like me sitting here like, yeah, she's, that's, that's the kind of person she is. And it's like, no, no. Sorry, I got so sidetracked, but finishing up this section, because the line of being a desired object, i.e. something that someone can fantasize about and being a sexual point of access, i.e. something that someone thinks they have the right to gets blurred so often, it's hard for someone like myself in all the stuff I just told you to show off my body without feeling like somebody is gonna take it too far and feel entitled to it is basically what I'm trying to say. The entitlement to sexual access to these women's bodies is what a lot of these rappers are unknowingly and knowingly selling. Now, I don't want to make it seem like none of the women that are working in these jobs have any agency when it comes to how they're depicted because I think a lot of them were able to set their own prices, were able to make some pretty, pretty coins, were able to launch careers in other avenues because they did video modeling. So I'm not trying to take away anyone's agency and say that they had absolutely no control or what, over whatever. I mean, Melissa Ford in one of the interviews she did was straight up like, I was the queen of no. No, I'm not wearing that. No, I'm not doing that. No, you can't touch me. I think a lot of other women probably were able to use their star power in that time period to be like, no, I'm gonna do what I want. This is how I'm gonna be presented and stand in the power of their bodies and, and being sexy and all of this stuff. So I don't wanna try and sit here and say that like, every woman that was ever a video vixen was a victim and we did this. Like, no, I'm not trying to say that, but I am just trying to, as I always say, bring a bit more mindfulness into that, especially into this idea of what is being implied and what's the story that's being sold. Because even if you're astute and, you know, analytical and are like, mm, yeah, I don't think that every black woman in this type of body or every Latina woman in this type of body is someone that I have access to just because they're in this rapper's video, you know? A lot of other people might not have that, uh, that thought process. You know, they might see a girl at a club looking like a Melissa Ford and just grab her and be all, you know, just get all handsy. There are too many girls that I know that have had stories like this for me to not believe that this is part of the problem, you know? I feel like I got so sidetracked today, damn. Anyway, let's do final thoughts. So I know the 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 next, this week and next week's video, next week's video is gonna be a lot very theory oriented and I hope it makes sense because I was reading the script and I like recorded it and was like, what? 
but it's just I'm in a really busy time right now. A lot of stuff is happening, so just bear with me, y'all. Just bear with me, okay? When I was doing research for this vid last week, this week, and and watching these videos, I was kind of reminiscent. It was nostalgic. I was having a good time, you know, but I did. I forgot that I hadn't seen a lot of these videos in a long time, so watching them, I was like, uh-oh. The early 2000s video Vixen is, is such a prototype, you know, like she just, she created the Instagram model, you know? She she was a fashion girl. Like she just, it's beautiful to me in a way because it's like you see women with bigger hips and bigger booties being celebrated and being desired, but also, it's also just that hard thin line though of like, yes, these women are beautiful, they're desirable, we love to see it, we love to see black women and Latinas being celebrated, like it's a good time, but we gotta be a little careful because it only takes that that one person to ruin it for everyone else, you know? And there are, there are too many too many people out there that are the culprits of ruining it for everyone else. There's no crime in admiring someone's body in your mind or thinking, hey, this, wow, they're beautiful. Wow, I, oh wow, I just want to, as the French say, they God them. But yeah, the uh, we, we gotta really be careful with the type of things that we're consuming and the stories that we're unknowingly consuming, especially about certain women's bodies when it comes to uh, sexual access, because that just creates a mess of problems, okay? I filmed two vids today, just for transparency's sake. I filmed two vids today, so I'm a bit tired. I'm just trying to push out these last few, and then I'm gonna go on a break, because I need it, okay? I've been doing videos every week since January. A bit just tired. That wasn't me upset with any of y'all, I'm just saying. Okay, okay, well, I'm gonna go now. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. But feed your plats, water your plats. Remember that you can always change your mind, because you can. I got this outfit from Urban Outfitters, by the way. No, there's no promo or anything with it. I just, I just bought it from them. Specifically, I was gonna wear it in last week's video and then it didn't come in time, so anyway. Have a wonderful day and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye. And there isn't enough therapy in the world. Oh, you know what, I don't wanna say that. And my fellow aunties, uncles, and piplings, if you're new, feel free to take a look around. So, ah, uh -huh. et <laughs> Sexual desire versus access. Oh, okay. Because the line of being a sexual op- I'm talking too fast. Wait, I said that weird. Surrounded by beautiful women, parting it up, parting it up with you. So once I think I've observed, I, do you know what I'm trying to say? I don't know if I can say it right. Woman eating a sexually suggested food? <sighs> Woman eating a sexually suggested food? Suggestive. And in the era of 2000s hip hop, that seemed to be, s I don't have eyebrows on today. Slow motion shot of a femme walking around with her legs out. S should I put eyebrows on? Slow motion shot of a femme walking around with her legs out and some oil on them. No, okay, back. Slow motion shot of a femme walking out with her, <laughs>